I'm Cameroon. And I'm Alex Van Pelt. And this is what's happening and what's up in the Counter-Strike world. This is it. He's got to always play for now. M4 in hand. Has got a Molotov as well. Smoke goes down. He's on the other side of it. Oh, could make something of this. You know, that all three players are waiting for him. He's going to push through. How is this going to go down? This is insane. Edwards, he gets one. He gets two. It's down to a 1v1 here. A trend against Edward. Thumb planted, smoke in. Edward, that molly goes out. The trend's on it. Oh, and Edward goes wild. The final seconds keeping Narvi alive. What was that? The most sick play I've seen in a clutch. That clutch from Edward was the beginning of the end for Liquid at the Intel Extreme Masters this past weekend. Navi won the match between Liquid two maps to zero after that insane comeback on Dust 2. Liquid had seemingly secured the second map, being up 14 rounds to seven, but Edward stepped up and Navi shut down the last American team left in the tournament. Team Liquid did show some promise this tournament, having beaten Virtus Pro two maps to zero. VP did have a stand-in for the tournament, bringing in Michu for snacks, but the win still showed how North America is making strides in the right direction that can eventually result in a first place finish. Navi's roster of Seized, Guardian, Flamey, Zeus, and Edward fought and earned every round. Guardian had rounds that defied conventional logic, and Flamey was a wall that every team had trouble getting through to plant the bomb. Navi takes home $56,250 for the first place finish at Intel Extreme Masters after winning two maps over Team Solo mid zero in the Grand Finals. The tournament brought us a Navi victory, but it was also an eye-opener for some teams. We can see this now as Team Solomid has rumors surrounding the current roster and whether the organization will retain them going into the new year. Also, in the shadows of Intel Extreme Masters, Luminosity cut Steel and Bolts to bring on FNX and Taco from Games Academy, hoping the change gives them higher placing in future tournaments. Yet again, congrats to Navi on a solid win this weekend and showing that they are still a force to be reckoned with. Yet again, the Counter-Strike community is shocked at the announcement of another player stepping down from his team. Last week, Pronax left Fnatic, and this week, Sean Garris is stepping down from Cloud9. Announced on November 24th on the Cloud9 site, Sean Garris will no longer be a part of the Cloud9 starting lineup. Sean Garris is regarded as one of the best in-game leaders of the North American team, as well as a fantastic player. He's been with the Cloud9 roster through its ups and downs since when the roster was acquired from Complexity. This only leaves one question. What will he be doing now? Cloud9 has stated in the article that they'll be holding an open trial to decide on any new additions after the first of the new year. So who knows what's gonna happen? What's your guess? What do you think Sean will do now? I'm thinking he'll take over the coaching role of Cloud9 with some new talent taking his roster spot. Let us know what you think. What if I told you that LP Kane no longer owns ESEA and won't have any controlling interest in management or operations going forward? <laughs> Christmas didn't come early, but it sure feels like it. Announced on November 20th, Swedish media company Modern Times Group purchased ESEA in a quote, complete buyout. Breitbart has an article talking about the changes and goes on to mention that one source also confirmed that it means that controversial ESEA owner, Eric Thunberg, who has presided over and fueled some of the biggest controversies in the company's history, will be leaving and that he won't be missed. This news comes alongside the recent acquisition of DreamHack, which happened earlier this month. This does create a fear that a potential monopoly is in the mix, but I think that if this move can at the very minimum result in ESEA being cleaned up, then it was for the best. This Super League, as it's being dubbed, has shown that they have the money and time to invest, giving $500,000 out across the season and giving teams something really to fight for. ESL has really shown their intent on fostering the North American CSGO scene's growth through new tournament locations and this purchase of the largest North American CSGO community, they're getting everything set for 2016, the year of North American CS. Guys, it's finally gonna happen. North America is getting a major. Happening from March 29th to April 3rd, Major League Gaming, AKA MLG, is holding the MLG Counter-Strike Global Offensive Major Championship at the MLG Arena and the Nationwide Arena in Columbus, Ohio. What first started out as a report from Richard Lewis on Breitbart Tech was then made official from a statement direct from MLG. The group stage and the quarterfinals will be held at the MLG Arena with them saying that this is gonna be a one of a kind viewing party. Matches will then move to the Nationwide Arena for the semifinals, the grand finals, and also an all-star match. 
At the moment, we'll be seeing Envious, Navi, G2, Ninjas in Pajamas, Team Solo Mid, Virtus Pro, Fnatic, and Luminosity return as legends, with the challengers to be announced from qualifiers. When more information is released about the qualifiers, we'll let you know, but be sure to write this part down. Tickets go on sale December 3rd. They haven't announced any ticket packages, but I'm sure there'll be some. I know I'll be on the Ticketmaster site December 3rd, trying my best to snag a ticket. What about you? First off, have a happy Thanksgiving from the What's Happening What's Up crew, and if you need a side of Counter-Strike with your turkey, don't forget to catch the Face It Stage 3 Finals happening this weekend. Also, for your moment in CS, we almost had a deja vu moment at the IEM San Jose event when Edward from Navi almost got a second 1v4 clutch. Don't be mad at yourself, Edward. You still walked away with a bunch of money. Again, trying to stem the tide, and it's not going to be good enough. It leaves Edward alive in a 1v4 without really too much hope of getting anything done. He could make it expensive, two kills, that'll do it. But he's down to 19 HP and a backstab coming in as well. Device closing in on his heels. Oh, but Edward knows, how does he know? He gets a shot that's now a triple. And Sipnix is up in that sight here. That's gonna be a little bit scary. Edward moving in with the M4 in hand. Sipnix looking back towards the pit. Gotta be careful he doesn't get shot in the face here. And Edward doesn't quite hit it. Sipnix now just staying alive is important. Grenade comes in once and Sipnix is gonna get the shot. Triple kill of his own. <laughs> and they're gonna be the first round then. Edward, he was ready for it as well, he believes.